Welcome to Growing to Get Her, the podcast. My name is Kayla, and we are now on episode two, y'all, of Growing to Get Her. All right. If you missed last week's episode, you definitely want to go back and replay it. All right. That episode was based on obedience. Okay. So anytime you miss them, you will be able to catch them. If you're watching on YouTube, you will be able to catch it on the playlist titled Growing to Get Her, the podcast. And if you're listening in on Apple Podcasts, okay, I got it right this time. If you're listening in on Apple Podcasts, again, it will all be linked together so that you can constantly grow and hear this, okay, and replay it and binge it, all right? So I'm excited to talk about today's uh, episode, all right, y'all? We are going to get right into it this episode y'all is titled separate emotions to grow okay and let me just say this i can definitely relate to the title i know it's like well kayla you made the title yes i did but it's also relatable and i know you can relate to the title right like how many of us have emotions that are just so overpowering that it clouds our situations it clouds our judgment Right. And sometimes they're so loud, we don't even realize that we move and navigate through life in these spaces of emotional influence. All right. So today, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about separating, separating emotions to grow. All right. This podcast is rooted in us growing. Last week, we were talking about obedience. This week, we're going to talk about emotions. And I want to note that we are still in Samuel right i did not plan this like this but i love it i love it because there is so much um different parallels and ways we can pull to grow from the first from first samuel and that's where we are today okay so last week we were in chapter 15 today we're going to be in chapter 13 we're going to back it up a bit all right because this chapter 13 i'm gonna fast forward then we're gonna hit rewind again so had the chance to be established, his kingdom to be established, but he lost that from emotions, all right? And we're not losing where we can be established. So we're gonna go through this with that in mind. How can I be established? How can I be planted? Okay, boom, we know obedience, but we don't want to lose our place. We don't wanna lose where God is having us go because we are unable to detach emotions while seeking to be obedient, okay? Where we're thinking certain things. And I'm gonna get into all of that, all right, y'all? So just, I wanna just go ahead and build the framework, build the mindset that that is how we are tracking for this episode. We are tracking for, we with the mindset, we wanna be established. We could just go ahead and say that together. Establish me, God, establish me, all right? So Saul was anointed king. Samuel anointed Saul as king, all right, y'all? And in doing so, he gave him prophetic insight. And this is about chapter 10 in 1 Samuel. He gave him prophetic insight and let him know, you know, um, that he would be looking out for certain signs. In the process of doing so, he gave him instructions and said, go down ahead of me to Gilgal. I will surely come down to you to sacrifice burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. But you must wait seven days until I come to you and tell you what you are to do. So then as time goes on, chapter 13, he now goes to Gilgal. Part of Samuel's prophetic insight was he let Saul know that the Philistines have an outpost out there. So now you know your um, adversary, your, your opponent, right, is on the outpost. So you know they are in proximity. So they wind up, one of Saul's, his son, attacked the Philistines, right? Outpost. Now it's starting, they, the Bible references, I'm, and I'm just giving y'all backstory, y'all. The Bible references it as the Israelites were like a stench to the Philistines, right? And so, um, and so then this is when it starts to increase, meaning the battle. So the Philistines assembled to fight Israel, all right? Israel is the side Saul is overseeing. He's king, okay? With 3,000 chariots, 6,000 charioteers, and soldiers as numerous as the sand on the seashore. So that's a lot. Let's just break that down. Basically, 
they came through ready to do what they 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 were hoping to do seeking to do right to overtake is the israelites and so during this process saul's men they are quivering with fear they are fearful and so um in the in the process of them being fearful um they were waiting out the seven days that Saul, that Samuel had told them, wait out the seven days, I'll be there on the seventh day. Um, so it says, Saul remained at Gilgal and, and all the troops with him were quaking with fear. He waited seven days in the time set by Samuel, but Samuel did not come to Gilgal and Saul's men began to scatter. So he said, bring me the burnt offering and the fellowship offerings. And Saul offered up the burnt offering just as he finished making the offering. Samuel arrived and Saul went out to greet him. Okay, so Samuel's people were fearful and some scattered, some left, right? That's a real situation. You have people, um, you have your, you have, you're at war. It's seemingly that you're outnumbered. The people who you are supposed to be your support, who are supposed to be fighting with you, right? They're fearful. There, some of them are scattering. That is a lot. And something I noticed from like last episode when I went back to watch episode one was that, you know, it's so easy to paint Saul as this bad guy and just like, oh yeah, how could you? And, you know, just some of the tone. But it's also some relatability because we, we're humans. We are humans and we're not always obedient to God. And we have reasons that are, a lot of them are emotionally rooted and why we do what we do or don't do. And so in reading this one, it was very loud to just come to the human connection with it, right? With, yeah, like, of course you should have listened to, listen to Saul, Saul listened to Samuel would have been his best, in his best interest, clearly, right? He's a priest, prophet of God, like, come on, you, first things first, you, that's a no-brainer, but he didn't, and so let's just explore the emotions, right, where Saul missed his chance to grow, he missed his chance to grow into kingdom, because as you read on, Saul, um, Samuel says to him, what have you done? Saul replied, when I saw the men were scattering, and that you did not come at the said time, and the Philistines were assembling at Michmash, I thought, now the Philistines will come down against me at Gilgal, and I have not sought the Lord's favor. So I felt compelled to offer the burnt offering. And Samuel let him know then, you acted foolishly. You have not kept the command the Lord your God gave you. If you had, he would have established your kingdom over Israel for all the time. But now your kingdom will not endure. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him leader of his people because you have not kept the Lord's command. Okay, so in the the king, the king he's appointed is David down the line. It's going to be, it, he's, he's already, remember, it's written. He's already appointed, but had there was also a god's plan which was to establish saul but he missed that and 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 that's evident based on you 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 didn't do what the lord commanded so now you don't have what you would have had now god has appointed somebody else because your emotions so let's get into this when I saw the men were scattering and that you did not come at the said time and that the Philistines were assembling at Michmash, I thought, let's get into this I thought. How many times do we think something? And by us thinking something, we feel like, here goes the emotion, the feeling, that is valid because the thought came. And I looked up, I love definitions, y'all. I love to get to the root of what a word means to properly apply it, right? And so thought is an idea or an opinion. So let's translate this. Okay, so Saul had an opinion. He used his thoughts as opinions, right? And that was based off of what he interpreted. So interpreted means to explain or tell the meaning of. So the way that he explained it and rationalized his actions to himself was based off of what he saw, right? And so let's get into it because it's actually like a cycle. So you have your idea, and based on your idea, you then take what you're seeing, what you're interpreting, 
And then based on that, you then feed it your emotion. If you're not feeding it God's word, because things look like stuff all the time. Like something can seem like something. And in your mind, you can take it and say, no, this is exactly that. You've, 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 you've taken everything into consideration. So it seems, and you have this idea or thought, right? And then you, that's the way you interpret it. But if you're feeding yourself based off of that, and if you're plugging that in with emotions, right? So like I'm interpreting this and while interpreting this, I'm looking at what I'm, I'm now combining it with a state of feeling. And let's get into like what emotions are because that's a big one. So emotion is a natural instinctive state of mind deriving from one's circumstances, moods, or relationships with others, all right? And so when you're talking about different emotions, you have happiness, sadness, and these are just the six basic ones. You have happiness, sadness, fear, anger, surprise, and disgust. And as humans, we talk from the state of emotions. We typically go through life with the emotions at the forefront. And it's not until after when more information comes out that then we're willing to abandon emotions to get to the actual resolve of whatever it is. Because before that, we're gone, we're gun ho with whatever I feel. If it's sadness, happiness, fear, anger, that is what's leading. If you don't train your mind, if you don't root yourself in God, and this is for me too, y'all. This is us growing where it's like in a situation, it's like, okay, pause. Am I being emotional about this? And if I am, what emotion am I standing in? Am I standing in fear? And I'm st am I standing in anger? Am I standing in disgust? Am I standing in sadness? Am I standing in happiness? Because although we don't talk about it, sometimes we let happiness make decisions where somebody, but, oh, I got peace on that because you're happy. Because it doesn't seem like it's a negative thing. But if that's not what God told you to do, then that's not valid. That's not peace. That's, that's, that's a false perception because you just interpreted that, right? You just fed yourself this place because you are happy. And you said, yes, this makes sense. It's not negative. Boom. Let me roll with that. That is dangerous. All right. When we're rooting ourselves in obedience, when we're rooting ourselves in God, it's like, well, is it factual? Let me, let's get on facts, right? Because I, I Googled it. When I Googled it, this was the only one that came up with like a separate word beside it. And, it, and beside it said law. And I love that because God's word is law, right? And so it says fact. God is, his His stuff is facts. Like a lot of what we see is not facts. Because we're looking from the flesh, emotions, and unless you're using your spiritual discernment and partnering with God, your interpretation your reality is off, right? And so it says fact, the truth about events as opposed to interpretation. And so it's like, although I interpret it this way, what does God say? What does God's word say? So for instance, when Saul sat there and he seen, right? He was not crazy. He seen them. It said that they they were out. He was out. It was as many um, Philistines as the number of sand on the seashore. Numerous as the sand on the seashore. So he definitely seen and interpreted what was there. But was it a fact? Was it a fact? Was this what God told him to do? Was this, was this, and as in, is this what God told him to do with how he proceeded forward? Okay, and it's also worth mentioning this right here. When Saul was anointed, Samuel had told him um, that, once these signs are fulfilled, do whatever your hand finds for you to do. God is with you. So, yes, he did tell him that, but that doesn't override the instructions God gave you. So, it's like you have parameters, right? Like, there's still boundary lines in terms of what God told you to do, which is to be obedient and what you're equipping yourself to do. So, it's like, so you were given instructions to follow and you abandoned those because of your emotions. And I really just want us to root ourselves and frame ourselves like going forward with obedience. Like, God, yes, you told me to do this and I might feel this way because emotions are universal, y'all. It doesn't matter if you're black, you're white. It doesn't matter where you come from, what's your background. Everyone has emotions like that. This is not to um, 
let's say like ignore or downplay emotions because they're very real this is to have the conversation and to build our mind framework on let's separate them though because if we don't we're holding ourselves to places that you can't grow Saul put himself in position to not grow to not be established because he was rooted in fear. He was fearful. He was rooted in anxiety. Is is Samuel going to show up, right? Like you he said he waited for him, right? Like you're looking for something. You don't see something. And then let's even take it a step further. In the insight that Samuel gave him, he did not tell him that the Philistines that he was going to be going to war. You let him know he was on the outpost, but you did not get he did not give that. But what he did give was specific instructions to wait on him. And had he waited on him, he then would have solidified himself, his his kingdom. Uh, you know, he would have some he would have established his kingdom over Israel for all time. So his bloodline would have been positively affected. So let's make this personal. What decisions are we making based off of feelings that not only impact and rob us today, but also our bloodline, also our children, our grandchildren, because we root ourselves in the emotion and allow the emotion to take the forefront, to take the lead on whatever it is that you feel like you have this valid reason, right, to point to. So I have a few notes. I have a few notes. I want to make sure I'm not missing anything because um, we got to make sure we get all that we need. Oh, yeah. So your emotions, they will always validate you because it's your perception, it's your mindset. So if you're looking to be validated and you're rooting it in emotions, you feel that way. So you're going to feel you're right. Because it's a feel, you're going to feel you're right. Your your emotions are going to validate you until you separate it. And when you separate it, that's when you can allow God's word to flow, right? Because some of our emotions, we we can't even. I always say this. I love like when you do one thing, it just it, it activates something else, something else, something else, right? It's like for instance with God, you do you do that, right? You forgive. Now you let in mercy. You get what I'm saying? Like you're allowing other love you're allowing more to flow but without it it's stopping isn't it's not just stopping one thing it's many things so for us with our emotions they're gonna you're gonna always be justified and supported by your emotions unless you pause and you separate and when you separate you compare it against god's word right so if we are flowing in mercy if we're flowing in love, if we're flowing in fruit of the spirit, because there's no there's no law on that. We love to put law and limit on the fruits. There's no law. We love to set parameters on how much we give somebody grace, but there is no law when it comes to kindness and love. There isn't. It says there's no law on that. God, he gives us that daily. So who are you to say, yep, that's enough? And mind you, a lot of it is rooted in interpretation. A lot, and, and, and it's not that that person may have not done something. It's not that your emotions are not um, important. But are they worth you losing your position? Losing what's yours? Because if you're rooted in these things, how how when do you switch? When can you flow? And who's to say you're not choosing wrong? in your actions because you're rooted in this emotion. So let's start separating it where it's like two things can exist at once. I can feel this over here, right? I can feel that, but this is also fact. And I'm going to go with, I'm going to be obedient, but then I'm also going to have my feelings over here. I'm going to talk to God. I'm, 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 I'm going to get wise counsel, but that doesn't change this. All right. So let me tell y'all something just real quick. It's like I have company, right? in my home. And I didn't know how I was going to be able to do my recording. Now, this is when, like, you know, I'm, it wasn't really fear. It wasn't really like that. It was like uncertainty where I'm like, well, I don't know how I'm going to go about like, like the spacing of it because I don't have a dedicated office for my recordings, right? It's more like I get in where I fit in. Um, and so, what reminded me was I'm rooted. If I'm rooted in obedience, the assignment is to produce it. It don't matter where I produce it. I'm to produce it. So if I had to go to my car 
to record this, it was going to be a growing to get her together podcast car episode. Is it ideally what I wanted? No. But was it what I was willing to do? Yes. Because I want to be planted and rooted in obedience. So with looking at the emotion factor, right? If we start separating the emotions and it's like, okay, you might act a certain way in the moment. But if we start retraining our minds, conditioning ourselves in our spiritual realm where it's like, no, what did God say? What does his word say? And if I don't know, let me go seek it. What does the promise say? Check it against because Saul actually was told something was coming, right? Samuel was coming on the seventh day. It just didn't come when he was expecting it. And the emotions got loud and separated him because he acted on it from the promise, from what he didn't even know was going to be done. But you showed yourself you don't have the capability to be king. You don't know how to wait. You don't know how to trust God. You know, you, you're you allowing fear to overtake you, which understandably so, but you still fed into it because then you have David who on the other hand, shows that it can be done. When he was going through battle, he stopped and prayed and asked God for, for guidance. And no, not the same, but the point is the heart posture, right? So it's like for him, we didn't see him say, oh, you know, just in prayer or trying to to um, root himself back in God and what his words was. He just acted out of, oh, I thought, right? I have an idea, I have an opinion about this. And because this seems to be factual, this must be true. As we close out, I want us to just recap, okay? So, and also to remember, emotions can lead you to be influenced by what your perception is, right? So like, just keep that in mind that emotions have influence, okay? They create openings of influence. Where it's like, yeah, you're looking for things to, not saying we're looking to be validated, but yeah, if you're like operated in a place of fear or sadness, anxiety, all of that, you're 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 opening yourself up to that versus if you're separating it, right? Because for some of us, we have assignments that require us to have our emotions in check. What that means is that, yes, I can acknowledge my emotions, but I'm not going to idolize them. I can't stay there. I can't I can't put that at the forefront. I can't worship the emotion. I have to worship God in his word. So how do we grow from this? How do we grow into separating our emotions? We pray about it. We pray about it. We ask God to give us the eyesight to see it the ears to hear it the revelation to show us ourselves right show me me show me me where where am i idolizing the emotions where do i need to separate it's like being open to that right also reading his word reading his word because that's where you get your check and balances the word says for us to guard our hearts but are we guarding our hearts? Because out of it flows the issues of life. So if we're not guarding our hearts, we're operating from emotions, there goes the issues of life. We're putting ourselves in positions based off of strong emotions, right? That seem valid when they're really not. Not when you're saying that you could be established. Not when you're saying you're now not showing the emotional capability because his Saul's emotions cost him the kingdom. We don't, I want to be trusted with where God has me going. I want him to trust me and I want to know that I've grown into that, right? Where it's like, no, that, that emotion is very true, but this is what has to be done. And when you think about strong leaders, that's how they roll. Where it's like, yeah, I can acknowledge that. But however, comma, I'm over here doing this and this has to get done. And that, those are really great leaders where it's like, wow, I did, they didn't stay in that. They shifted. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to shift ourselves into separating our emotions. And I also would say, take moments to, like the word says, like you don't have to be quick to speak. So sometimes our, our emotions encourages us to give like certain reactions, responses. And it's like, pray for the self-control and sit in that and say, you know what? I actually don't have to respond to that. And it's going to take some work. I'm talking to myself right now. 
it's going to take some work. I understand that. But I don't have to respond to that. I don't have to be rooted in that emotion because it's going to give, what, an issue. It's going to encourage something. It's going to feed something that's not beneficial to where I'm headed, to what I have to do. And I want to be trusted with my emotions where God is leading me. So that's it, y'all. Episode two, Growing to Get Her. Today's episode, Separate Emotions to Grow. Make sure that you're subscribing to the channel if you're not yet subscribed subscribed, or listening in on Set Your Alerts for the Apple Podcast. Episodes drop every Wednesday at 1130. Every Wednesday at 1130, you could catch this episode. I should have led with that at the beginning of the video, um, but you can catch us every Wednesday at 1130 and... Yeah, I have a lot of good stuff coming for the channel. So if you're listening in on Apple Podcasts, you definitely want to come over to YouTube because I'll be having different vlogs. And then I post other stuff in between outside of the Growing to Get Her um, podcast. But I love y'all. It's been fun. And don't forget, label the emotions, separate it, and let's grow. <music>